Ahead of the 2023 general election, let's tell you that more support is mounting for the All Progressives Congress presidential candidate Ashwaju Bola Tinobu in Enugu State. The Federal Character Commission in charge of the uh, Federal Character Commissioner in charge of the state, Gineka Tor, has inaugurated the Igbokwenu support, uh, the support group for Tinobu Shetima campaign. Our correspondent Bamdele Ajayi reports on this. In less than three months, Nigerians will be heading to the polls to elect leaders at various levels of government. What that means is that the electorate also are silently making frantic efforts to elect credible leaders that will meet the yearning and aspiration of the citizens. In Enugu State, different social cultural associations, pressure groups, and interest organizations are now pitching tents with candidates and political parties of their choice. To do my best and to serve. For this pressure group, aligning their political understanding with the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and his running mate, to them is the best option among others. The man we're talking about is Ahmed Bola Tinubu. He is not just very credible, he has a record of performance. And what Nigeria needs today is a man who has that record. We have no reason to go either left or right. Most evil persons are involved in this because they now know that there's a voice that can take them to the promised land. And we believe in the capacity of Avala Ahmed Tinubu and Shatima. The coordinator of the group acknowledged the Igbo contributions to nation building, urges people of the zone to vote massively for APC as a viable political platform that will secure a better future for the region. And he wants me to come on board to begin to live the dividends of democracy. And that is why we are out to speak to our people. We shouldn't make the mistakes we've been making before. So it is time for the to think, think smart, think wise, and get on board real circle of politics. We are still outside the circle. We need to get on board. And it takes a man that has given us the opportunity. I'm not even going to convince anybody. People already know him. So the message I'm going to take to them is going to be very simple. Vote for Ola Ahmed Tinubu. With a little over 100 days to the 2023 general election, hopes are high for candidates whose grassroots support base cut across geopolitical divides in the country. The newly inaugurated members are expected to crisscross the two sister political worlds of Enugu to market the candidacy of Bola Ahmed Tinubu and Kashim Shatima as a team that Nigeria needs to move the country to the next level of development. Bamedele Ajayi. TVC News, Enugu. Meanwhile, a group, the 19th Northern State Movement for Kashim Shetima, who promised to mobilize 20 million votes for Ashwaju Bola Tinubu, have intensified door to door campaigns in Kaduna State to ensure the victory of the APC presidential flag bearer in 2023. Director General of the movement, Abubakar Aliyu, who recently gathered over 500 Christian clerics in support of Ashwaju Tinubu and Senator Shetima, also issued certificates to 1,646 organizations who registered under the movement. Mr. Ali further disclosed that plans have been perfected in the northern state to have about 1.5 million people intensify the house-to-house -house and door-to-door -door engagement to mobilize votes for the APC presidential candidate. He also urged the North to reciprocate the support given President Muhammad Buhari by the South in 2015 and 2019. And the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, was in Benue State where he promised that his government, if elected president, would return peace and security to the state and restore its status as the food basket of the nation. Peter Obi was joined by his wife and running mate, Dati Baba Ahmed, for the rally in Makadi. The Labour Party flag bearer used the opportunity to make a pact with Nigerians and told them to hold him accountable to every promise he made during campaigns. Mr. Obi told his supporters to collect any money offered them by other parties during their visits to the state, but urged them to vote the Labour Party. Don't the 90 come. We'll go back to the 
Let's take you to Borno State, where the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, says it will restore peace to the country if elected president in 2023. He stated these are the flag of, of the presidential campaign of the party in Maiduguri. There is more in this report. The People's Democratic Party officially flagged off its campaign in Borno State. <laughs> However, the PDP presidential candidate addressed the party supporters. His key message was that if elected, he would ensure restoration of peace and livelihood to victims of insurgency if given the opportunity to help affairs of the nation. PDP is elected, we shall restore peace and order in Bono State, not only in Bono State, throughout the country, to make sure that we reactivate child basic development authority so that our farmers can go back to farm so that we can produce food for our own people. The name of Nigeria today is too much. And the only person that can handle it and make sure that our children are able to grow happy again is Atiku Abubakar. <laughs> Party supporters turned the rally into some sort of carnival chanting solidarity songs. The campaign was held peacefully at the Rama Square Maiduguri with heavy security presence. In terms of uh, the Maiduguri women, there are so many plans put on ground to make sure they are reintegrated, supported, including you know skill acquisition and grants and then being mainstreamed into the main political line that they have been missing for so many years due to the unrest in this area. You can see this is an APC state, where you can see the turnout in masses, how people are clamoring, calling for a chip all over the uh, uh, angles that we mentioned. If we can't even have access to even pass because everything, everybody is out just a celebration for our people. This is a sign of victory. However, according to the PDP presidential spokesperson Dino Melaye, 74 persons were hospitalized, while 100 vehicles were vandalized as hoodlums clashed with members and supporters of the People's Democratic Party while on their way from the Shiro Banu Palace. And despite the crisis in the opposition People's Democratic Party, the River State Governor, Yesam Wiki and his allies are now saying that the reconciliation door is open to the leadership of the People's Democratic Party anytime. Governor Wiki and his allies have been at loggerheads within the part with the party since the PDP presidential primary went in favor of Atiku Abubakar. The aggrieved members are demanding the resignation of Yochayu as the national chairman of the PDP and have pulled out of the party's presidential campaign. Speaking after Governor Wike's allies, known as the G5, visited the Bauchi State Governor, Bala Mohammed. The, the River State Governor said they never closed the door for reconciliation. The visit comes on the heels of reports that Bauchi Governor is set to leave the party's presidential campaign over claims that Mr. Atiku's loyalists are working against his re-election. Let's talk this through by speaking with a political analyst, Opunabo Inko Taria. He's joining me now to discuss the uh, meeting of the PDP G5 governors with the Bauchi State Governor. Thank you so much for joining us on TVC News this hour. Very quickly, what's your reading of this latest development coming out from the PDP, despite the crisis that the party has been faced with over time? Well, um, for me, I think it's just a high blood pressure of deceptive rhetoric. I mean, the issues are clear. The G5 governors want you removed. And in the removal of a national chairman, there are procedural obligations that are enshrined in the PDP constitution. And even if the national chairman is removed today, uh, the person that will succeed him must come from that zone. But the G5 governors are saying that the constitution could be reviewed to allow a South South man uh, or a South Anna. Uh, emerge as a national vice chairman or as the chairman of the party. But then, to tell you that that argument suffers from excess of reason and poverty of logic, uh, the truth about it is that 
If the national chairman is removed today, the man who is succeeding comes from that zone. So how have you achieved your aim? The party constitution can also not be re reviewed within this short period for that purpose. And the party constitution can also not be reviewed for just a microscopic few to protect and protect the interests of a microscopic few. Therefore, in my submission or my conclusion, the G5 governors, and that's why I said it's a high blood pressure to set it better. The G5 governors, led by Governor Yosem Wike, uh, who was bested at the presidential primaries, I agree that Wike did not emerge as the presidential candidate of the party. And because Yosha Ayu referred to the Supreme State Governor as the hero of the day, they, they are so angry that they want Yosha Vendetta. They want Yosha Ayu to be removed by whatever means, whether legally or illegally. And at this point, illegally. Because Yosha Ayu himself was elected. And it was after the election of Yosha Ayu, the and even assumption of office, that the, nation, the president or the presidential candidate was elected. So if they had also taken into consideration the provisions of the Constitution, they ought not to have elected the presidential candidate. But the presidential candidate was elected after the election of mm. Yosha Ayu. So yeah. right now saying that Yosha Ayu was be removed is a decoy. To me, it's a stalking horse. The truth about it is that because Yosha Ayu lost the election, the uh, uh, bid to, to become the presidential candidate, it will stop at nothing to truncate or frustrate the measures of our speaker as a president. Don't forget, this we can have boasted. He had boasted on a few occasions that without him, PDP cannot win. Mm. And he has also... Yes, uh, very quickly, he, let, he let me put it. Several locations. Uh, yeah. Yes. Let me put in. Governor Wike, you know, who appears to be leading the G5, you know, said that they've actually not closed the door or closed any door to reconciliation. Meaning, uh, are you seeing them, you know, coming to a roundtable despite having conversation, having ways of, uh, you know, meeting themselves to look for ways to resolve this crisis? Because if they go into yes. election this but way, I must tell you, I must tell you, my brother, quickly, because like you said, we don't have time. I must tell you, my brother. Their mission to Bauti is because of the perceived breach between the Bauti state governor. Can you hear me, please? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can. Because Go ahead. Time. Can you... Okay. Their meeting to Bauti state was to meet with the Bauti state governor and probably win him over. That is why they went to Bauti state, because they wanted to exploit the risk. But luckily, the Bauti state governor is savvy enough, politically savvy enough. And if you listen to what he said, he said the uh, PDP delegation met with him and that the issues are being resolved. So he, he did not say, he said it's for all, it's for one and it's for all. So he did not say he has joined their camp. But their main intention was to get him over so that they have to appreciate and also to a very large extent uh, frustrate the, the uh, emergence of Atiku as the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That was why they went to Bauchi State. Now, the truth is, when it, Wiki has said that the issue of reconciliation, the doors are still open. But you will agree with me that there cannot be a reconciliation. Because it's not a reconciliation, you're talking of accommodation. Compromises must be made. And they have said that they will never compromise unless yeah. your child is being removed. So why do you now say that the issue of reconciliation is ongoing? Because your child will also not be removed from office. There are procedural obligations. And right now, it's too late in the day for it to call for a change of back. And that is why I'm saying right. it's a high drop project of deceptive rhetoric. Definitely, they, what the impression they are trying to give to Nigerians yeah. is that they are open to reconciliation. But that is a grand delusion. They are not. Their minds are made up. Right. All they want to do, do is to ensure that Atiku does not emerge as the next president mm. of the Federal Government of Nigeria. Well, Come May 29. Well, we, we, we still have, we still have some, uh, several months to the uh, presidential election. We'll continue to monitor these events as they, as they continue to emerge yeah. or unfold. Political analyst Okunabo Inkotaria, thank you so much for your keenness of insight on these issues. Thank you.